What double standard disgusts you? The employee should give two weeks notice, anything else is unprofessional. But the employer will actively obscure their intentions until the very last minute. Right now in Canada, we're in strict lockdown but a dozen of our politicians have been found vacationing around the globe. In other words, we can't bury grandma at a funeral, but these politicians can go work their tan. Thankfully, many of them have resigned in the last two weeks. If you always arrive to work late you're in big trouble. If work never finishes on time, shrug, no big deal. This is infuriating for me in a sales position. I constantly stay late or even have to come in on my off day to finish up a sale, because that's how I get paid. We still have scheduled hours but me showing up 5 minutes late won't make a difference towards my paycheck because those 5 minutes definitely won't make me a sale. But they treat it like it's the absolute worst thing I could do. They've pulled up lists for each employee showing how many times we've been late by the minute. I was told I've been late 8 times for a grand total of 15 minutes over the last 6 months. This includes from lunch breaks as well. And I was told this was unacceptable and put on a warning. This same thing was said to majority of our sales employees but we get no praise for working over or in finishing deals. It's crazy. I had an exit interview, I was leaving for a job that paid better and had better bennies. My boss said you know, you're late 5 minutes at least once a week I said man, if that's all you got I'm the best employee you're ever going to have. Your former boss clearly has no idea why you do exit interviews. One last chance to shit on the employee clearly. I did an exit interview with the head of our at a very small company, 50 employees. The president and CEO decided to sit in on the interview, which to me is unprofessional, and the first criticism I mentioned he immediately started bashing me defending the poor manager. I didn't share my full thoughts after that. Completely defeated the purpose of the interview. So it is somewhat understood how bad this company was, I worked there for just under 2 years and was the 15th most tenured person there in a company of less than 50 employees, counting the two founders. The employee turnover was that bad. The exit interview is for management i.e. the CEO to determine if there needs to be any changes, so I don't think for a small company it is unprofessional for the CEO to sit in on an exit interview meeting, but his reaction does sound unprofessional. It sounds like if he worked for a larger company, he would be a manager, not an executive. Business should do whatever it takes to get ahead, but if the employee tries to make their life better, or find a new job, they are lazy and ungrateful. Recently on here there was a thread about employers hiding the pay for a posted position. Most people hated it as it was a waste of time to get to the point where they are willing to tell you the pay and it's an insulting amount. A few people were defending it. One guy said that it only makes sense for the employer to hide this from you and try to manipulate you about pay. From the employer's point of view they need to pay you as little as possible and if they post a salary then people who want more than that will not apply, so no chance to underpay someone who is worth more and they will have to deal with people who aren't good enough for that meager salary. So according to this guy, really, it's for the best that they try to screw you with hidden a salary for job postings. He's saying this as if we're supposed to just agree with it and not stand up for ourselves and just bend over and take it. But us demanding to know the salary during the first contact about a job. Unacceptable. How dare we try to interfere with the company trying to screw us. What makes that even worse is it isn't even good for the company. It isn't like people do the interview on their free time. Everyone involved is wasting time. That costs money. Further, training people up and having them leave is a huge money sink for companies. I worked at a place that would intentionally hire people out of college and low-ball them because the new hires didn't know any better, and then they would act shocked when those people would leave after six months of training to take a job making twice as much with the skills. I remember listening to a manager say that we were just losing money training these guys, and how they were so ungrateful. One of our senior guys was like, wait, you're paying them what? Well then I'm your problem, I'm the one telling them what they should be making in this industry. Can't really be mad at the kids for finding out you use their ignorance against them. The awkward enraged silence that followed was priceless. Edit, wow I did not expect that to resonate with folks as much as it did. Thanks for the award and upvotes. Lol, I made it through three rounds of interviews at a company just to find out they paid 30% less than what I was making. How much money did all that wasted time cost you? How much money did all that wasted time cost you? My wife had this happen. She was on leave and was just looking at options as it was drawing to a close, but fundamentally she had all day. Five interviews occurred before they told her the salary. Five. With most of them being at least an hour long, with at least two people on. 
WTF were they thinking? It was so much company time and they were so below market with the rate she flat out did the math for them on how much company time they waste with their hiring process. Since it's COVID and we work from home, I got to hear her whole side from the next room, and it was fantastic. Unless it's some kind of executive position, five interviews is ducking insane. I had three interviews years back for a minimum wage driver's position. It's ridiculous. If you owe a company money, you will be charged in arrest late fee service interruption almost immediately after the due date. If a company owes you money, you might see it in four to six weeks two three billing cycles. When I leave a job, I'm generally expected to give two weeks notice so the company isn't left without essential things being done. When a company decides to let me go though, no warning to start putting in applications or saving more money. You're just gone. Total horseshit. Not in countries like Germany. It's harder for the company to get rid of you than you leaving. Similar in Australia, they need to give notice. I think I had one where it was one month notice, but they got around it by just paying me for the month and not having me come in as I could have been a security risk if I was disgruntled. Certainly didn't mind being paid for a month to not come to work. I've been made redundant twice. First time, they paid me out my final month. Second company made me work it. They wanted me to take my holiday as part of it, but it was at the start of COVID and I wanted cash in the bank, so I half-assed the job for four weeks. A woman with her kids is taking care of a man with his kids is babysitting. Politicians not following their own COVID guidelines. It has become rules for thee, but not for me. Banks businesses can immediately withdraw money from your bank account and apply all their disgusting fees. But for banks businesses to give you money, you have to wait 7 to 10 business days for the funds to appear. If I wake up at 4 p.m. and go to bed at 9 a.m., I'm lazy, do nothing all day, etc. Wake up at 4 a.m., bed at 9. You're seen as a responsible member of society. Doesn't matter if you work the exact same number of hours, make the same money, do the exact amount of housework. Ada, holy cheeseballs this blew up. I can't reply to everyone. So I'll just add this. If you are just scrolling through the comments of the original post, please keep in mind that not everybody works a typical 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. job. Someone has to work the 24-hour jobs, Walmart, Waffle House, the gas station, hospitals, emergency services, etc. If your house catches fire at 2 o'clock in the morning, you are not going to wait until 8 a.m., when typical jobs start to call somebody for help. Not everybody has the same circadian rhythm. I am one of those people, I have something that is called delayed sleep phase syndrome or delayed sleep phase disorder, depending on the severity. I simply don't feel tired when I unquote typical person would. I am not sleepy until after sunrise. No, I cannot just change my sleep schedule. Yes I've tried whatever it is you're thinking about typing and suggesting, probably several times. It doesn't work thank you for trying. I am content being me as I am. Finally, thank you so much for the awards. I thought it was a lot when I checked my messages and had 94 on the envelope. I 100% agree with this. My family always makes snide remarks about me sleeping late, but praise themselves for going to bed early. Like, okay but I got a ton of shit done while you were asleep. Nobody ever says get a load of lazy bones here, off to bed in the middle of the afternoon. I worked an overnight shift in college and my roommates knew that but still acted like I was sleeping the day away. I actually get less sleep than anyone and time makes no sense. It was only three months I don't see how anyone can live like that. Men versus women, guys is untrustworthy, skeevy characters around children. There was a guy who posted a while ago who portrayed my point exactly, about his experience being a teacher in infant school or something, can't remember exactly but the kids were pretty young. He loved being a teacher to help them, give them a good future, and watching them learn and develop into smart kids. However, there were a couple of occasions he got pulled aside by the head teacher for being inappropriate. One of them being, taking a young girl to the classroom nurse's office and giving her some antiseptic cream and plaster for her scrapes, since she fell over in the playground. Purely because he was a guy he was told parents might feel uncomfortable about that by his own head teacher. Like leaving a crying, bleeding kid in the playground was a more appropriate idea than her own teacher helping. It's usually the instructions that the male teachers are given in school to not have any sort of physical contact with any female student so cases like the one you mentioned have become commonplace. If a female student gets injured and the teacher has to wait until a female teacher or other female student comes in to help, all he can do is watch and verbally comfort the student but he cannot offer a helping hand. 
This is such a bad thing to have in practice like what if one of the girls starts to get a seizure or is choking and needs immediate Heimlich maneuver. A very harmful environment has been created for male teachers in schools.